Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm out here early on a Saturday morning getting ready to get after this 1986 Mustang GT. What I'm going to be installing today is this dash kit from New Vintage USA. Also I'm going to be using the New Rad Solutions installation kit which will make my job a whole lot easier. I'll show you that here in just a few. Let's go check it out. Guys, I figured I'd share with you a few things that I learned while doing this install before you get started. A couple of those things are, make sure everything's working. Is your lighting working on there currently? Do you have any issues? Is your, do you have tack signal? Do you have, is your oil pressure working? All those things is gonna be an indication do you either have a bad gauge on your existing cluster, or is it a bad sending unit, or is it bad wiring? These are all things that you want to make sure are working. If they're not, you might, you're gonna to have to figure it out anyway. So if you can validate that it's your cluster not working, okay, well good. But you can check to see if the other things are working by doing electrical tests. So that will save you some heartache. Another thing, once you get ready to pull out your existing gauge cluster, there is not much room behind these things and they are a pain. So one thing that's gonna help you out a ton, you're gonna to have to disconnect it anyway, is go ahead and disconnect your speed cable so your speedometer cable go ahead and disconnect it from the trans that's going to give you some slack to pull into the dash so when you pull that out you're not fighting that speedometer cable because that was the one thing that i didn't think about but it would have made a lot but it would have made a lot of sense right and something else you want to kind of plan and consider before you're doing this install are you going to do a gps speedometer or are you going to do an electronic signal speedometer so of course this is going to cost you money so is the gps this will send an electronic signal from your transmission. You're gonna to have to run wiring from that to the cluster. So you'll get a true signal from your transmission converted into speedometer. Then you have to calibrate that. The other way, probably a little easier, is the GPS. So that's two ways you wanna look at that. But of course, you're gonna to have to disconnect the speedometer regardless. So things to consider. A um, Couple of things that you might wanna think about, just make sure you spend your time getting your bezel installed make sure all of its trim so it's sitting flush on your gauges do all that on the table do all the wiring you can on the table get it all nice and neat test your wiring so plug it in make sure everything's working before you put it all back together i know this seems to be kind of uh you know uh, mundane but at the end of the day you know sometimes we get busy start putting stuff back together and didn't even realize to check stuff so make sure you check everything make sure it's working and then at the end of the day it's time to go enjoy it so Let's get back to it. I have yet to open this box up. I've had it for a little while, just haven't had a chance to get it installed. So let's take a look at it. Make this job easier we're going to go ahead and pre-wire everything from the harness that they include that will hook to the dash kit and then this will hook to your factory harness on your 86 mustang gt or other makes as well depending on the kit that you purchase and that will make this job so much cleaner so much better looking 
Darren includes everything that you need in here to give a professional looking installation without having to cut up your factory harness. Well boys, it's about time to go ahead and get started wiring. Now what I've done is went and printed the installation instructions from NewRadSolutions.com. That's where you also have an in-depth instructional sheet and video that you can go watch at NewRadSolutions.com. This video is not going to be an in-depth wire-by-wire type of installation. This will be a quick overview, show you the, the product, and let you know how much I like it. So I'm going to get started doing some wiring, and uh, I'll kind of cut in and out if I see something that may be a tip or trick that will help you out with your install. But other than that, go download the instructions and uh, go check out NewRadSolutions.com. So before I get started with the new Rad Solutions kit, I need to go ahead and get the gauges installed into the bezel, get everything con connected back here, tightened up, and then I can start the wiring process. So New Vintage USA, they give you instructions on how to do everything there. Very detailed color instructions. Go check out New Vintage USA. Guys, I'm gonna tell you, I'm really impressed with this. Also, I've seen it on another 86. That's really gonna be pop popular at SEMA this year. So, uh, well, heck, let me get started putting these things in here real quick and I'll catch back up with you. Right, guys, so one thing I so one thing I do want to call out is it wasn't really covered in the instructions when going through those on assembling the gauge cluster. So there is these four spacers included, and of course they're it's obvious that they're the same size diameter of your small gauges. They are all offset. You'll notice here they are offset. That's also for a reason for spacing purposes. So I, I didn't know, I, I would assume they'd have to be used if they included them, but what that does when you install it, if you were to leave those off, and if you look at your gauge cluster here, these would be recessed further than your tack and your speedometer gauge. So then you wouldn't have a flush fit once you put your factory bezel on top of this. So one quick tip on that. Also, when you're adjusting these, all you need to do is finger tighten these on the back, get them adjusted to where they're straight, and then you can tighten them. Well boys, after I got everything tidied up, kind of got all of these wires connected, just went by the instructions in the new vintage um, book. Now I've got the wiring diagram here pulled up that shows you which wires go to what out of each different gauge. And then right next to that, I've got New Rad Solutions wiring table pulled up here so basically so I can just match so it's pretty simple guys it just takes a little time make sure you double check everything and it, it's as simple as okay so I started here with fuel I go here fuel green coming out of the speedometer double check because these two harnesses are the same so you don't want to mess up and be connecting stuff to the wrong harness good thing is there is a label on the back of each one of these so you know which one of these that you need to be connecting to also, you'll have to pay attention that once you get into your oil senders and all that stuff, double check where you're going on those. So, green, fuel. All right, I'm on, everything here is labeled R1, which R1, when I look here, goes to fuel level. And then it also shows you what your factory color is, which of course would be plugged to the other side of your pin connector here. So once I plug that in, it does show your uh, your factory wire color for reference. So guys, I'm gonna be here for a minute connecting wires. It's all about just matching the colors to the numbers and uh, a little crimping and getting it all nice and tidy. And then we'll take the next step and get ready to start installing this stuff. Like I said, guys, this isn't a full installation video, but I do want to share with you some of the tips that I came across while doing this. Now, it does mention in the instructions from NewRad that you'll need to modify your existing 
dash bezel. Now it doesn't go in depth because it's going to depending on what year you have. Now normally you would have your warning lights. This would be the back side of it right here. This would be the indicators. Well, the new the new dash actually has all that that sits flush to here. So I'm going to have to trim also that off with my Dremel. So this lip here will keep your new dash from being flush. This also has to be removed. Now from the factory, these are just heat, you know, heat melted in. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. I mean, <laughs> it pops off pretty easy. You just get a dang screwdriver in there and just pop it up. Same thing here with your indicator lights. I'm using the indicator lights on the new bezel, on the new dash. And these are green, but they're also green already on your new dash. So this needs to pop off and that comes out there the same way. But any of these little tabs that you have sticking up, this sticking up here, all that will have to be trimmed. And then you'll want to test fit your dash on here just to make sure the gauges fit flush. So that way, when you do get everything put together, you don't have any gaps between your rings and your actual gauge face. Guys, one other important tip is that you really want to take your time before you ever get the gauge cluster in your car to take time to get these gauges adjusted just right. There is enough adjustment. Also, you'll notice that on your small gauges, the spacer is oblong. That way you can actually position your spacer to where you can be butted up next to another gauge if need be. There's enough play in each one of these gauges to get them lined up perfectly. The problem is, is the, if you just get them all centered up, they may not exactly fit up perfectly with yours. So you're gonna have some adjustments and some back and forth play. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to get everything just perfect. Also, after you get everything trimmed here too. So take your time, get your gauges just right, get a good starting point, see where this thing needs to fit and get everything adjusted the way you want it. So I've got all of my wiring complete. I've got all of my gauges adjusted and tightened up just like I want them for when I put the bezel on. I'm not going to tidy any of the wiring up yet, so right now I'm going to go plug everything in, make sure everything's working, and then I'll pull it back out, tidy up the wiring, then we'll get the finished install. Guys, there is some minor uh, cutting you will have to do inside of the dash. I'll show you here. Having a Dremel type tool with a half speed rotary cutoff bit is going to be crucial to make your life a lot easier. Another thing guys, so if you'll look here, you see your air conditioner duct kind of goes right, sorry I'm getting my hand on the light, right all behind here. You can see it running across over there, okay? I've also got to make a cut right here. So I'm going to make sure that I do not go very deep when I'm making this cut here to allow clearance. Now guys, here is really where all of the benefit as you're finished doing it. You got your harnesses ready to go, getting ready to install it in the car. And now you get the simplicity of being able to literally take it and snap it into the factory harness. Could you imagine trying to cut all these wires, run all these wires, add wires to your, I don't, guys, this right here, that right there is what it's all about. That is the benefit. Well, boys, there it is looks pretty nice now here's what i want to do let's do a start up i'm going to take this light off of it because i can't hold it and both hands and uh, i'll put it back here let's see here get this light back here so you guys can kind of see gopros aren't the best in low light all right so let's fire it up Look, I still have some tidying up to do here, guys. Um, but man, I can't wait to get this all finished. I still have some other work to do. 
But man, I'm really impressed. Look at the lighting. <laughs> and then when you go to turn your car on, isn't that cool? Love it. The number one thing that I learned while doing this install is that they're not easy, but I can tell you this, I would not have wanted to do this without this kit from New Rad Solutions. Guys, I want to tell you, so we think about these kits. Now, When you, the best way I could describe it is think about going and buying a, uh, a an aftermarket head unit. And what do you do? Well, the head unit doesn't send you a harness for your car, right? Because they're kind of universal. So then you go buy what? Typically a Metro or a couple other brands out there that takes your factory harness and allows you to wire it to the aftermarket head unit. That's exactly what this is, but just a little more complicated than that. But guys, being able to take that and, and take new, uh, new Rad Solutions kit to be able to hook straight into your existing factory harness to plug in your aftermarket digital dash, I don't, Guys, I don't know. I don't even want to think about how hard it would have been to do it without it. So that's my number one. Spend the extra money, get one of those kits. Don't do it the hard way if you're doing a digital dash install. I know they make them, and these actually work with you know Autometer, with Dakota Digital, with New Vintage USA. You know, any digital dash, they're made to work with that. It's really taking that wiring, and he's got all of your wiring charts, all that. You take both those, put it together and it makes your life a lot easier doing with these installs.